Hi guys and girls on YouTube and welcome to my channel. I've got a little treat here for the people who like vintage TVs. Um, I've got this Bush. Um, I think it's an A823. It's in, um, I think at the time these came in different colours. This, I think it's called Flaming Orange. But they also came in white and some other colour. Um, now, uh, am I excited about this? Well, not really because it's such a long time since I've seen one of these. Um, I think the last time I actually repaired one of these, I was only a teenager. Um, I'm 58 now, so I can't really remember much about these. The only thing I can remember um, is there was something you couldn't unplug. If you left it unplugged on the degaussing um, panel, a resistor burnt up. That's the only thing I remember. Um, so um, I've searched through the manual. I've got the service manual somewhere, but I can't just find it. Uh, but I've looked... Um, through these manuals and um, there's bound to be something uh, through all this lot in fact um, if we move over here um, I found one that relates to an A823B so um, I don't know if it's a service manual I think it's just a diagram anyway uh, it's, it's a start so uh, let's get it turned round and let's have a look at the back because this is an absolutely mint set. Uh, I mean, there is a few odd marks on the case, um, but somebody who restores cabinets, I've no doubt, could uh, sort that out. Uh, not me, though. So let's turn it around and look at the back first. Right, well, that's the back. And uh, the first thing that hits you is just look at the condition that's in. This has had very, very low hours use. Um, in fact, it actually came with some spare boards, um, but these, these boards look like they've been hammered. Uh, the cap's been changed on that, and if you look how black uh, that circuit board is. The fact is it's all, it's all cracked there, it's been repaired where it's all cracked. Well, if you look how, how black that is and compare that with the one in the set. The one in the set looks almost new. There's the thermistor down there. And that's the one on there. So yeah, what an incredible set this is. Uh, now the first thing we're going to have to do is take the power board out and just reform this capacitor before we plug it in. Um, but even the back of the tube's all nice and shiny and clean. Yeah, what a set that is. Right, so um, I think we'll do the cap and um, just have a quick look at the time base. We'll do the cap and then we'll, uh, we'll come back to this in a bit. Just have to take the power supply board out and um, I'm going to have to try and remember what it is that you can't leave unplugged could actually be that there but I'm going to have to have a look in the service manual just to double check yes yeah, no charring of the board no nothing on that very very good set that in fact the, the guy actually said it works he just wants it recommissioning because it's not been on for a long time so let's reform the cap and see where we go from there right so I've just got the uh, power supply board out the set and I've just realised that's not the mains reservoir capacitor because that's only rated at 30 volt. Um, and I've remembered now it's down there or at least I think there's two down there. But um, it's not that that you've got to uh, remember to plug in either because that's the mains in. Right, so I've just touched up some solder joints. Um, on the um, the VA1104 uh, main surge limiting um, resistor, I've done that there, and um, also I've resoldered R2, which feeds the 20 volt feed to the decoder because that also gets hot. Um, I have just put uh, a polarizing voltage across that cap for a little while. So what I'm going to do now is put this back in. Uh, I'm actually reforming, in fact it's done now, the um, 
these two caps here now I still can't remember what it was that you've got to um, not forget to plug back in otherwise something burns up I've got a feeling it's something on here so what I've done uh, is I've actually reforming these um, in circuit rather than take this panel out so uh, yeah it's looking absolutely fine uh, just screw that board in and then uh, what I'm going to do next is um, go over it with a hairdryer and just get it nice and warm before we actually plug it in but yeah so far so good let's just take another look while we're here the uh, line transformer and triplers in there that's the convergence up into its servicing position uh, I've got the chassis pulled out a bit so I can get to it that's the convergence and A1 controls and what I have noticed is um, these capacitors which are probably A1 decoupling because uh, what are they they're, they're a thousand volt um, somebody's changed them because they're radio spares types so it has had uh, work do, done to it in the past um, I've also noticed on there a date on the capacitor uh, February 1970 so that gives you an idea of its age so right let's get that power board back in and uh, then we're ready for the switch on when we've warmed it up right just one other little thing to point out before we turn it on um, this IC here has actually been changed because it's in a socket um, and they never were in a socket and in fact I remember I seem to remember these boards had two ICs on um, and this has only got one then when I look at this diagram it's actually showing two ICs on the decoder um, so they must be different versions of this board actually in fact when you look at this spare board that's come with it the glass delay lines across the bottom um, and in that one it isn't it's up the side uh, but this does have uh, a two chip decoder whereas the one in the set is completely different with only a one chip decoder um, so I would imagine this fitted in the set is, is an earlier version um, I don't know whether they're interchangeable um, I'd have to find the proper service information but we're not going to try this for a moment uh, we're just going to concentrate on um, getting this set going for the customer right there's w just one little thing I can't make my mind up about um, here L9 um, now has it got shorter turns or is it just the heat from this part which has probably caused the varnish um, on it to uh, discolour um, because if you look at all the other parts this one has extra ventilation holes in the top um, so obviously uh, it's a 7 ohm wire wound that is designed to get very very hot um, and if you look underneath there is some charring under the board but I can't quite make my mind up about L9 so I think what we're going to do is we're going to have to take that out and measure the inductance um, but I'm going to do that when we actually get the uh, the set on you see there's some marking there but that could just be the heat from that that's burnt the varnish on that so um, yeah I'm going to come back to that it's part of the red green tilt circuit anyway so you'd expect um, if that had shorter turns uh, you'd expect like a um, convergence error but we'll come back to that when the set's on then right so it's Saturday morning the day of the big switch on um, what I'm doing here is I'm just bringing up the internal temperature with a hairdryer um, so there's no thermal shock when we first turn it on from cold and uh, I think before we turn it on as well also 
I'm going to take out the anode cavity um, EHT cap and just clean round here and perhaps put a little dab of silicon grease on before we turn it on just so we don't have any uh, leakage or flashovers. But yeah, another uh, hour and uh, I'll stop the camera, another hour and be turning this set on. Right, so here we go then. I've just moved it to another bench so I can turn it around a bit easier. Uh, but just look at the condition that's in, it's absolutely mint. Right, so let's get ready to turn on then, see what happens. Now, bearing in mind I was told when this was laid up, um, it did work. It doesn't mean to say it's going to work now, but fingers crossed, let's hope it comes on. Right, here we go, camera's running. The plan first is to just turn it on, see if it comes on, and then if it does, we'll think about connecting a signal source to it. So here we go. Yeah, it's crackling, that's a good sign. Yeah, we do have a raster of sorts. Right, so, so far so good. I'll just leave it a couple of seconds and then uh, we'll connect a signal to it. Right, we'll take a look at that. The grayscale is absolutely perfect. Uh, the convergence is as near perfect as you can get, so we've no need to worry about that inductor having shorter turns on the um, convergence panel. Uh, the only thing I can see, it wants the slightest tweak possible of the blue lateral coil on the tube neck. But apart from that, it looks good. Um, now I'm going to have to put this on colour bars because the top of the picture appears to be bent over slightly um, and this band you're seeing here, I don't have that on the camera, that's actually coming from the camera. So, let's turn up the colour and put it on um, a channel. Yeah, it definitely looks a bit um, bent at the top of the verticals, but let's go in on a cross hatch and see. Right, so that's on the cross hatch, so we do have a slight uh, bend just at the top of the picture. Uh, so I'm going to have to look into that, and also the height just wants dropping down about 5 millimeters. So yeah, we're looking good. And there's a bit of um, expansion there and compression at the bottom. So we do have a slight field fault, but I would say that's good. I've already tweaked the blue lateral. That's brought that back into line. That's pretty good, I think. And uh, as you can see, the, um, the bar's disappeared off the camera now. Right, so for the bent verticals, the 50 microfarad emitter bypass uh, capacitor here in the uh, reactant stage uh, that's actually dried out so we'll get it on a meter um, so it should be 50 microfarad and it's, uh, it's down to 1.18 so I've changed that uh, I've put one in, I haven't got one that looks exactly the same I've put one in that's close enough and it doesn't look out of place so all we've got to do now is find the instruction to set up the line oscillator coil. Right, so there we go, that's looking better. We've got uh, straight verticals now. Right, um, just a quick tweak of the convergence and then we'll see what it's like on a picture again. Right, so that is about the best I can get it, so uh, let's put a picture on it now. Well, what about that? That's not too bad then, is it? Coriander, please, darling. I'd have up some for my salsa. Do you want some? Oh, yes, I would love some. Do you want it chopped, sliced, diced? Just roughly chopped, please. Roughly chopped, okay. Right, so all that remains now is to um, 
flip the convergence board back into the set, screw it all back together and uh, I'll retry it uh, again on Monday and just make sure everything's okay. But yeah, that's not a bad result that for um, a telly that's over 50 years old. All right then guys and girls, I'll catch you in the next video and uh, many thanks for watching my channel. Goodbye. So I'm now, I'm just going to, just before I serve, it's all ready to go. And I'm just going to crack the top of the yolks so that we, so that we get them an opening and sort of 